first down, they hand off to Marlon Mack. Huge hole, 50-yard line. He's at the 40, still going near sideline. He's at the 10, he's at the 5, and he will score. Touchdown, Marlon Mack. Touchdown, I-N-D-Y. And again, it's picked off. It's Darius Leonard. Leonard with a second INT, and he's streaking down the near sideline. He's at the 40, he's at the 30, he's at the 20. He's going to go. A pick six for the Maniac. Horseshoe is back, baby. The horseshoe is back. Hey, what's going on, Colts Nation? Xavier Caldwell here, and today I'm going to be talking about a few matchups in this Colts versus Titans game that's really going to be key if we want to win this coming Thursday. I got film for two of these matchups from last year. The first match is going to be Quentin Nelson versus Jeffrey Simmons. Uh, next is going to be Roger Saffold versus Grover Stewart. Them are the two matchups I have from last year that I have film on. The last one's going to be Xavier Rhodes versus AJ Brown, but I kind of had to improvise. I went and looked at Xavier Rhodes versus the Bengals. You know, T. Higgins, AJ Green, guys that are physical like AJ Brown that are making contested catches like AJ Brown. Um, neither of them guys are as good as A.J. Brown this year, in my opinion. A.J. Brown last year had um, over 1K yards and 11 starts, and this he's on that track again, five starts, over 500 yards. The guy's looking like a beast. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. But this first one here, Quentin Nelson versus Jeffrey Simmons, this was the hit heard around Nashville. Um, this is what really got Titans fan talking. I've always been an avid uh, Colts fan on Twitter. Sort of a Quentin Nelson stand. I love the dude. He's one of my favorite players to watch in the NFL. Maybe my favorite currently. Like Quentin Nelson's just a beast. The dude is just a f just physical every single play. He wants to take your helmet off. And on this play, dude, he got. I mean, he got beat flat out. He just Jeffrey Simmons came on a bull rush. Quentin Nelson stepped into him and just got his leg buckled and put on the ground. So this is a rough play for him. But let's see it. Yeah. Now, to be fair, the play doesn't look very natural. It looks like Quentin Nelson steps wrong. Something something kind of just don't look right about that play. Um, and his kind of ankle kind of comes up there. I don't know what happened, but nevertheless, really good hit by Jeffrey Simmons there. Jeffrey Simmons is a physical guy. He's not like some slouch. He's not a bad player. He's actually probably going to be Pro Bowl this year. Uh, maybe even all pro. The guy's playing at an incredible level on the interior for the Titans. Okay, this next play I got is going to be Nelson versus Simmons, one-on-one, -on -one run blocking matchup. Anthony Costanzo kind of messes this play up here for Quentin Nelson. He does a good job of getting out the ball, changing the line of scrimmage, moving Simmons back about a yard. It's not much movement, but for Simmons to be their best interior defensive lineman, this is what you want from your, your main offensive lineman. You want him to be able to change the line of scrimmage, get Simmons uncomfortable. And right here, you're going to see him do that initially. Um, but Simmons does a good job of trying to work back, and then Anthony Costanzo comes over, gives him a punch towards the ball, and it really helps him here, and he gets over and makes his tackle. Let's see it. It's a good job from Simmons. Uh, he did a really good job initial, or uh, right after the initial hit of working back towards Nelson, so nevertheless, a good job from him. But still yet... I don't know why Costanzo hits him right here and pushes him towards the play. But overall, a good physical hit from both guys. Like I said, it's going to be a physical matchup. going to be a good one to watch. So this is going to be the first play I got for Quentin Nelson. And this is going to be at the 9-14 mark in the fourth quarter. You're going to see Nelson just really fed up at this point. You saw Simmons beat him twice, once in the first, once in the second. Nelson's just fed up. And here you're going to see, right here, Jeffrey Simmons is going to be lined up on Kelly. You're going to see play action right. Simmons is going to get off the ball hard, and Nelson is going to come over and just smack him and put him on the ground. Let's see here. Boom. Good job there from Nelson loading up, getting a good punch on him. And that's just a tone setter. This is the fourth quarter, and it shows you that Nelson – He's been beat twice this game. You don't, you didn't see many of this, uh, a lot of plays of this matchup this game, but I would almost guarantee you'll see it this game. Um, you didn't see many of 
of this match, many reps of this matchup, I should say, last year, but this year you will see it. Right there, and that's just a good hit from Nelson. Um, like I said, he's just being physical. This is the fourth quarter. Seen him lose two reps already, and he's just keeping the physicality up, coming and hitting Simmons, letting him know, establishing his presence. Hey, I'm still all pro. I'm going to be all pro this year. I'm that guy. And this is just a good rep from Quentin. So this is the last play I got for Quentin Nelson, and then we're going to move on to our next matchup. And on this play, you're just going to see Quentin Nelson fire off the ball hard. You're going to see Simmons fire off the ball hard. This is just, like I said, a physical matchup. These guys, if they're not going to do anything, they're going to be they're going to be physical. Um, and you can tell, really, last year the the reps against each other, they looked raw. Like it looked like not one of them was trying to beat the other. They were just trying to hit each other as hard as they can. That's something I love, man. If you're going to have a competitor on the defensive line and a competitor on the offensive line just really loading up and hitting each other every play, that's going to make for a fun matchup any day of the week. And here you're going to see exactly that. You're going to see Quentin Nelson take a step, throw his shoulder in there, and then you're going to see uh, Simmons just get off the ball hard. Initially, Simmons or Nelson changes the line of scrimmage, but Simmons works his way back in here. Um, and I made this a winning rep because Hines just kind of runs over here. Simmons takes himself out of the play. Uh, these guys were just trying to hit each other hard. This is the play right after Nelson put him on the ground. So Simmons is probably steamed a little bit. All right, I just got put on the ground. It's time to go hard. Uh, let's see it. Yeah, and Hines gets a four-yard gain right here. This is just a really good hit. I mean, these guys are physical, like I said. They, that play doesn't look like, you know, two people that are all pro caliber hitting each other and making a block. Like, you can tell they really respect each other's strength. They really are just putting their whole body into these hits. And right there, you can see Simmons' head snap back. Nelson hits hard, man. You, you, feel, you feel it when Quentin Nelson hits you, I promise you. But he does a really good job of being powerful there. Working back towards Quinton's outside shoulder. Um, but still, yeah, that's a good rep from Nelson. Hines runs right out right out of that gap. That's just that's a winning rep for Nelson. See it one more time. Okay, this next matchup I got. Uh, again, Roger Saffold versus Grover Stewart. This is going to be a good one, especially this year. Grover Stewart has improved hands down. He is a night and day improvement. Um, in pretty much every category. Strength-wise, he's, you know, he lost 20 pounds. So he probably was a little bit stronger last year, but you can tell just the way he moves, the way he can contort his body, uh, his get-off, his lateral movement, like I said. He is one of the best one-techs in the league, hands down, this year to me. He is just 100% just improved. And right here, you're going to see what Saffold and Ben Jones does the best. Um... Mostly Saffold because Ben Jones isn't as good as Saffold. Saffold's been a, a top 15 guy, a top 15 guard for the last three years consecutively. He's He's been that guy uh, for the Titans at the guard position. But here you're going to see them double team Stewart, which is something you're going to see a lot. This team loves the double team. The Titans love to double that one tech. You're going to see them double team Stewart, and you're going to see Saffold get off and put a absolute huge hit on Anthony Walker here. Let's see it. Boom. Just puts him right on the ground. Actually, both plays I have of him, he does the same thing. He double teams, gets to Anthony Walker, and puts him on the ground. That's the thing that Saffold does. Um, if you have a, a guard in center that can double team all the way, a guy five yards, and then you got a guard that can get off and put the linebacker on the ground. That is disruptive, man. That is disruptive. Um, and that's something Saffold does. That's why I put him up there in that top 15 last three years. He disrupts. He gets from first level to second level effortlessly, even though he's not even that fast of a guy. He's just really fluid with his movement. He knows what he's doing. He's really He has high awareness. He knows, Like I said, he just knows what he's doing on the football field. And here you're going to see him just flatten Anthony Walker, man. Really good play there from him and Ben Jones. So this next play, last play I have for Roger Saffold, you're going to see, again, what Roger Saffold does the best. That's that double team to the linebacker. Here you're just going to see him run through Grover Stewart's shoulder, jack him up, and let Ben Jones take over. Ben Jones doesn't do a great job of taking over Stewart on this on this double to, 
linebacker. This is more of a zone block than anything. And that's something Ben Jones struggles. And especially this game, if they try to do this a lot, Grover Stewart's going to eat, man. He's going to eat. And even on this play, he still did a really good job. But um, initially, Staffo gets the best of him. He does a good job jacking that shoulder up. Does a perfect job jacking that shoulder up so a center can take over. His center just didn't do a good job. But Saffold, like I said, works to the second level, disrupts, and gets another huge hit on Anthony Walker here. We're lucky Okariki did a good job of coming up in here and meeting this fullback in this hole, and then Grover Stewart works Ben Jones back towards him and just really shuts this play down. But Saffold does a great job here, jacking up his shoulder, working to the next level, getting a huge hit on Anthony Walker. Let's see it. Boom, yeah, just gets a huge hit, man. Moves Anthony Walker 10 yards from the, from the spot of contact. Like I said, he works really well to the next level. He's just kind of maybe a little sneaky athletic, but you see his acceleration. That's the thing that stands out. I mean, he accelerates quick. Gets on that linebacker quick. Yeah, and just a huge hit. Let's see it one more time just to show you. Works his shoulder up, lets Ben Jones take over. Ben Jones just does a terrible job there. That was a really good rep from Saffold. So this play right here, we're going to see a one-on-one -on -one Grover Story versus Roger Saffold. And you didn't see this much this game. You did not see them leave Roger Saffold one-on-one -on -one with Grover Stewart. Uh, even last year, I liked Grover Stewart. I thought he demanded a double team. Uh, he really demanded a lot of respect. He was a 340-pound guy. Uh, now he's down to about 315, 320, where he should be. He moves a lot better at this size, this speed, or at that size. Uh, he still has a lot of that base strength he had when he was 340. He's he's just a lot better this year. But even last year, he made a lot of plays. And here, you're going to see him do a good job versus Saffold. You're going to see him shed Saffold and then make the tackle uh, in the backfield versus Derek Henry. Let's see it. right there he has really good job there from Stewart um, like I said this guy's a top 15 guard in the league you see what he does when he gets to Anthony Walker there's not many people in this league that can do that that can go one on one with Saffold and just hand fight with him knock him off balance get him out of his way and make a tackle on Derrick Henry in the backfield I mean Grover Stewart is a talented guy he was last year and this year, he's starting to get a lot more recognition just because of that weight he lost. He's really sped up. Let's see it one more time, though. Yeah, good play there from Stewart. So on this play, this is the last play I have for Grover Stewart. And then we're going to move on to our next matchup, Xavier Rhodes versus A.J. Brown. Um, Grover Stewart just does a really good job here in the second portion of this play. You know... Roger Staffold actually does a pretty good job of getting out the ball, getting through his shoulder, and hitting Anthony Walker. We're trying to get to Anthony Walker at least. But Stewart does a really good job of fighting Ben Jones back and actually stuffs this play up along with Kenny Moore. You're going to see Kenny Moore put his nose in here, hit this fullback. You're going to see Stewart drive Ben Jones right into the, that fullback, and it's going to see Derrick Henry just get stuck back here. Uh, this is a good play from Stewart, good play from Kenny Moore. Uh, and a pretty good play from Staffold to be able to move really well through this one tech. But let's see it. Yeah, and gums this play up. It's dead. Really good job there from Kenny Moore and Grover Stewart. Kenny Moore putting his nose in there, making the play, not being afraid of that contact. And again, a good job of fighting Ben Jones right here. Uh, and moving him. That's something I love about Grover Stewart. He just gets off the ball, changes, you, you know, the, the line of scrimmage. That's something he's going to do every play. Something he was doing last year, something he's doing especially this year. And we'll see here. You won't see this much. You will see just strictly double teams a lot this game. Um, I think a lot of teams are starting to catch on to Grover Stewart now. Uh, he got a lot more respect in that Ravens game. And he, he's definitely going to get it from this beat-up Titan squad. Because to be fair, let's think about this. This guy right here, Jack Conklin, one of the most talented tackle, young tackles in the league. He now plays for the Browns. Still got him. Still got Ben Jones. Still got Saffold. They had Taylor Luan. He got injured earlier in the season. So now they're just down to Saffold 
and Ben Jones. They really missed this guy right here. There's a reason Derrick Henry was the rushing leader last year. and It was because this offensive line was incredibly talented. Um, that being said, these two guys are still talented. We're going to see a lot of double teams on the Stewart. But Stewart, like I said, he's a beast this year. I don't even trust him to beat him in a double team. I think Stewart, I think Stewart's that guy this year at the one-take position. He lo really looks like the prototype, man. Just fast, quick, can move sideline to sideline. Um, really good against the zone. That's something you're going to see a lot from this Titans team. You're going to see a lot of zone run, and he, that's what he does best. So it's going to be interesting to see this matchup. But let's see it one more time. Does a good job pushing Ben Jones back, gumming this play up. Great job there from Stewart. So this next matchup I had is going to be Xavier Rose versus A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown looking like an emerging star. He's young, but he's very talented. He's about six foot tall, 225, physical guy. So I thought to myself, how am I going to do this matchup? Who, who am I going to put on here? And the one team that came to mind that Xavier Rhodes played against physical receivers was the Bengals. T. Higgins, A.J. Green. Them two guys um, are very talented. A.J. Green not as good as he used to be, but a lot of people are saying he's just completely horrible. He's not. He's just, he's just getting kind of old now. I'm going to be honest. He's just getting kind of old now. That's what's really happening to him. Um, but they still been targeting him, targeting him recently, and he's doing a lot better recently. So I still think AJ Green's not anywhere near one of the worst receivers, and he's still a big body, six four, two hundred twenty pound guy. He'll still go get a ball. Um, but against Xavier Rhodes, he can't do that. And you'll see the second play, he doesn't do that. Xavier Rhodes making a stop on third down. Um, but on this play first. You're going to see him working in man coverage versus T. Higgins, another physical receiver, 6'4", 220-pound guy. Um, and he just does an excellent job in coverage here. Let's see it. Stays with him, stays with him. Makes the play. Really good job there from Rhodes. Let's see it another time here. Notice how when he gets on him, he gets in his hip there, stays in his hip, gets his hand, keeps his hand there, reaches up, extends, makes the play. Really good job there from Rhodes. Let's see it one more time. We'll work to the next. We'll go to the next. Yeah, great job there from Rhodes. So on this clip right here, we're going to be looking at what Xavier Rhodes does the best. And that's guarding your physical receiver over the middle, stopping him from making a catch. And here you're going to see him paired up with A.J. Green, like I said. Um, A.J. Green was one of my favorite players growing up, so I might have a little biasy towards him. You know, I don't think he's purely washed, but like people are saying, but it, it's hard to say right now. Um, but you're going to see Joe Burrow go at Xavier Rhodes on third down. Now, inter interesting statistic about Xavier Rhodes on third down this season, when quarterbacks target him, they are 0 for 12. He has not allowed a catch on third down yet this season. Now, that's crazy to me. That is huge. That is like an astronomical statistic. Uh, last year, his catch percentage when targeted was 80%. This year, with the Colts, is a 40%. So completely cut that in half. Xavier Rhodes is a different version than himself. And last year, you saw him. He was injured a lot, playing through injuries. That was the big issue with him. Now you can tell he really worked on uh, this offseason, really rehabbed, got healthy. Um, the extended offseason probably helped him a little bit too. So we're seeing a new version of Xavier Rhodes. Um, really going back to like a 2017 version. Uh, this is this, He's back healthy again, and I love to see that. But here we're going to see A.J. Green run a, run a slant route, and Xavier Rhodes is going to get in his hip yet again, reach over, make this play. Let's see it. Great job, great job there. Just an excellent job, man. Comes right over, cuts underneath of it, and smacks it away. It's the thing I love about Xavier Rhodes, he's tall. He's got a long wingspan. He's physical. He's a great corner to have to cover guys like this. And that's what A.J. Green's going to want to do. Or uh, A.J. Brown, I should say, is going to want to do. He's going to want to body up on you, uh, make a contested catch. It's something he can do. And he's a really good route runner. And Xavier Rhodes has played great this year going to be interesting to see how this matchup turns out. Now I'm going to be honest with you, Xavier Rhodes is a beast, but AJ Brown, man, is looking like an emerging star. He's young, he's 
hitting his prime. He's hitting his stride. That guy's a beast. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a hard matchup for him to win. Yeah, but great play there. Let's see it one more time. We'll go on to the next. Yeah, really good job. First play here for AJ Brown. Uh, you're going to see him working against Kyle Fuller. If you don't know Kyle Fuller, that guy is super talented. All pro corner for the Bears. Really solidifies that secondary in the Bears. Uh, for the Bears, I should say. Now here, you're going to see Kyle Fuller give him all kinds of respect. People know or are figuring out A.J. Brown is a beast, dude. This guy is mean. He's great. He is a great player, and he's a fierce competitor, too. It's something I love about him. Um, and you, like I said, you're just going to see Kyle Fuller. You see where the other guys are playing. Uh, Kyle Fuller's not doing that. He's sitting back here, man. He's giving him all the respect in the world. He knows how fast he is. He knows how physical he is. He can do everything. Route run, physicality, run after catch, uh, contested catches, burn somebody deep. A.J. Brown's got it. He's the whole package, man. That's why, That's why. like I said, Kyle Fuller's giving him a lot of respect on this play. But let's see it here. You're going to see him just break off for a big 40-yard gain. He's going to cut inside. Like I said, physical. You're not going to arm tackle him, shed you off. He's going to put the footwork on, make... <laughs> Make Kyle Fuller fall and then still get forward for another couple yards. Really good job there from him. Let's see it a couple more times. Like I said, really good route run. Good hard step. Good plant step. Makes the guy... You can't arm tackle this guy. He's 225 pounds. Uh, you just can't arm tackle somebody like that. I said quick off the ball great release good step not arm tackling him getting to the sideline he's gonna make Kyle Fuller fall great job there from AJ Brown this next play is what I was talking about when I say he's the full package I said he can do everything route run make a contested catch uh, catch after run you know he, he can do all that but he can also burn you in here you're going to see him working on the inside versus number 24 for the bears and he's just going to take off and just absolutely burn him down the sideline for a 40 yard passing catch between him and Tannehill for a touchdown let's see it burns him safety not fast enough to work over there and then he drags him into the end zone catches this ball and drags this guy for seven yards into the end zone I mean, that's unbelievable to me. This this is a grown man on your back. And you're dragging him for seven, eight yards and then still scoring? Making the contested catch? That is unbelievable unbelievable to me. A.J. Brown is a absolute beast, man. I wish he was on the Colts. We really could use him. But um, it's cool to see how, how well he's developed. Um, I don't think really anyone saw A.J. Brown being this good. Um, but here he is. He's just 225 pounds. He's burning a guy deep. Burning the safety. Safety's not even fast enough to get over there. Making the contested catch and then dragging people in for eight yards. That is unbelievable, man. One more time. And we'll talk a little bit about these matchups. All right, that's all the clips I got. Um, but like I said, we'll talk a little bit about these matchups. Quentin Nelson versus Jeffrey Simmons. Nelson, two-time All-Pro, you know him. You know how Nelson gets down. He's a beast. Simmons playing to that caliber. He's looking like he's going to be a Pro Bowl guy this year for sure. Um, maybe even All-Pro. It's hard to say. There's a lot of competition at that 3-4 um, defensive end position there. But on to our next one, Roger Saffold, Grover Stewart. Saffold, like I said, been a top 15 guard in this league for the last three years, hands down. Maybe even top 10 a couple of them years. Saffold's been a beast. He's been snubbed of a few Pro Bowls, in my opinion. Um, he's a really quality player. But Grover Stewart, I would bet my last dollar makes the Pro Bowl this year. He's a beast. He's going to be a Pro Bowler, uh, along with DeForest Buckner, probably, at the D-tackle position. I mean, he might be playing better than DeForest Buckner, in my opinion, at that one-tag position. He's doing a lot more. His impact, in my opinion, has been higher than DeForest Buckner's this year. And I knew this was going to happen. I've been saying this before the season. 
Grover Stewart was a, was really talented to me last year. He was just slow. When I heard he lost 20 pounds, I knew he was in for a great year because he has that base strength. He changes the line of scrimmage. Now he can move sideline to sideline. He can contort his body. He can make people miss. He's looking like a Pro Bowl defensive tackle at the one-take position, hands down. Uh, so this is going to be a really good matchup to watch, like I said. But Xavier Rhodes, A.J. Brown is going to be the most crucial for us. If we're talking about a matchup that has to go our way or this game could get ugly, it's going to be Xavier Rhodes versus A.J. Brown. Uh, we have to contain A.J. Brown. He can change the game himself. Him and Tannehill can change a game. Uh, and we're going to have to see Xavier Rhodes' best version of himself this Thursday if we really want to win this game. But that's all I got for you guys. If you're still here, I appreciate you being here. Um, if you like the content, like and subscribe. But until next time, guys, peace.